Now we're about to apply the new cloth spine. We have the cloth all cut, laid out with a centering guidelines. We have our card cut to size. We have scissors handy. We have a variety of odd bits because of the turn-in. This is a rather straightforward procedure, except the boards have already been permanently attached to the text block. That complicates the turn-ins considerably. If this were a straight case binding, you'd do the turn-ins uh, independent of the book and bring everything, you bring the entire binding to the text block at the very end. The drawbacks there are basically you have to do everything just right in order to get a symmetrical, well done juxtaposition of the binding and the text block in the final step. Doing it this way, attaching the boards beforehand, this is not strictly speaking a case binding even though it, it has many of the uh, attributes. Uh, attaching the boards beforehand ensures that they are juxtaposed the front board and the back board are juxtaposed to the text block exactly as you want them. That's all fine. That's, a, that's how I do it, generally speaking. However, the turn-in part, which is going to uh, happen after we apply the cloth to the sides of the book, I'll take the book out of the press in order to work on the turn-ins that gets tricky. Uh, to aid that, should it uh, need aiding, uh, I have my palette knife, I have uh, my needle awl, and a uh, utility knife. Uh, I also have a very sharp uh, razor knife. Should I need anything, the clock is ticking. Once the adhesive is put down, you can reapply adhesive, but that's it's best if you can do everything in one swell food. So once I begin, uh, I may not be talking a lot. This really should be done uh, completely in one go. So PVA, polyvinyl acetate, white glue, a brush charged, well charged with wheat flour paste. I say well charged because that's a fair surface to cover. The reason, again, I'm using a combination of paste and glue, mostly glue, for strength and permanence. Uh, however, a, a small amount of paste to extend the set time. You can mix this together ahead of time if you'd like to get the proportion exactly right and then just apply it. Uh, I've done this so many times. I personally uh, find it quicker and easier to uh, mix it as I'm brushing. So let's begin. Again, always start within, well within the borders and work out. Don't worry about any apparent excess in any spot. Again, this takes practice, practice, practice to get fast and efficient with it. If your brush gets too thin, turn it over because the charge transfers uh, from side to side depending on you're pasting. There is a bit of distortion. This uh, cloth, binding cloth, it's professional binding cloth, 
is highly sized, meaning it's coated uh, on both sides. with uh, filler, and that helps prevent uh, undue distortion. However, it is swelling as we speak. Not a lot, not like paper, but it is distorting, so you want to work quickly. By quickly, I mean minutes and just a few of those. Now I'm doing the last look over here to make sure a raking light is very good because it shows you the sheen and you can perceive the depth to make sure everything's even. You want all the edges completely done. Never ever draw your brush in towards the uh, cloth. And you see I'm using the tips of my fingers. So at the very end you just have two minor little dimples of less than normal glue. We line up with the grid, our card, place it down. This should only take a few seconds. Smooth it down a bit. Don't have to worry too much about that. Just so it's not going anywhere. Carefully lift your cloth off the scrap paper. We'll put that aside for the moment bring our laying press, bevel boards, guard scrap paper. We spread our flaps. Working quickly again. This has to be done right the first time. I spread the far flap. Line up the card. I only focus on the corner and the corner of the shoulder to line this up. So line that up exactly, then focus on the far corner, line that up. Assuming your book is more or less symmetrical, pull that flap down. You'll be able to feel the card under and the shoulder do any minor little adjustment at the very last minute or the last second and start pressing it down. You want this nice and tight up against the spine of the text block. We are smoothing out the sides now. The ends will be our turnovers or turn ins, and they will be the next thing we do once we make sure there's no curl, whatever. Everything goes flat. I know you can't see this, but trust me. <laughs> You may want to do this a few times before you work on a good book. There you go. Using my thumbnail to get it right down in that crevice. Now, another thing, when you're uh, pressing it down, making sure it's tight, you also want to give a little nudge with your fingertips to the um, to the uh, hinge area. That's going to need to be uh, incised. Now, if you do it while everything's nice and moist from the adhesive, uh, it should stretch uh, and accommodate the hinge nicely. It's not, you're not dealing with a lot of, uh, uh, you don't need a lot of extra uh, play here, but you do want to develop a nice, nice hinge a defined, well-defined hinge. That's between the edge of the book. In this particular case, now, you could have a flush binding where the board comes literally right up to the right up to the uh, shoulder of the text block spine. However, in this case, there's definitely a gap. We're only going, we're only following what we were given uh, due to the 
parameters of the original binding. So, at any rate, that's done. It comes out of the press immediately, like so. We'll put this aside. clean sheet and here are our flaps we created earlier that's fine and that's going to take a little work first thing we do is adjust for discrepancies in our flaps they have to more or less equal. That's fine. That could use a little trim. The excess flaps will just be trimmed at the very end. And here, that's fine. Here, that could use a little trim. This is just so that we don't have any untoward business. Uh, now, I made the uh, backing cloth, uh, it comes pretty close to the end. Usually you have a little more play, that was a judgment call on my part. The only problem is you need to trim, when this gets folded over, this uh, unseparated piece of cloth won't uh, go over that because that's that's a barrier. So you simply make a little cut here. So there's the fold over and that should give that plenty of clearance when the time comes. And again, little nick and again Nick and a neck. Now we're ready for the turn-ins. No easy way to do this, at least I've never found it. Now you'll notice the spine is independent of the cloth, which means the cloth gets folded in between the uh, spine and itself. And I'm going to say we took a little too long doing all that. There's still a sheen, but by the time I get it on, it will probably have started to dry. So I'm going to take my already charged brush and carefully and quickly, just a tiny bit of paste to freshen up the adhesive. So make sure you get it right down to the bottom and that's one reason you don't want to do it because uh, if you don't have to is because you run the risk of getting uh, adhesive on other stuff. Now this gets folded in and how do you tuck that in conveniently? You can't. So you take something a little bit of an edge to it and start as best you can working it under. If this looks awkward, try it with a large family Bible or county atlas sometime. This is the worst job, in my opinion, in all of bookbinding. If somebody ever comes up with a technique that improves on this, please let me know. I wind up using just about every tool in my chest before the job is done. Right, that's started. Now we do the ends. 
draw those in and that will give us more or less a guide. And you see we clear with that cut we made, we clear the uh, we clear the uh, backing cloth. You could snip the backing cloth, but that would be uh, defeating the whole point of the backing cloth or, or compromising the backing cloth. And that's not a good thing. Now we have to smooth this out. Here's our bone folder. Let's see how close we've come here. It's starting to take shape. want the uh, fold to exactly, well, within reason, in this case, exactly match the uh, height of your uh, headbands. Now, uh, that looks good from here. I want to turn it over now and check to see if there's any problems here. That looks pretty good. There's no uh, crimps or crinkles. That should be pretty good. So that end is done. Now all we have to do is the other. You see how it's curling already. So again we take a tiny bit of paste, refurbish the adhesive. Do not want this drying out prematurely. There you go. I'm not bothering with those end little off-cut flaps because, of course, they'll be trimmed off at the end. I'm always, always meticulous. Get rid of anything you've pasted on. It's all too easy to forget. I have a large stack of scrap paper handy. Replace liberally. It costs nothing. Could be old newspaper, whatever. Now, under... Try not to let it crimp too much. Like so. Hold this back. I could use three more hands right now and several extra fingers. If it looks daunting and intimidating, that's a good thing. Then I'm doing my job right because it's not it's not easy. Most things in binding, you do them a few times and they get progressively easier and easier and before too long it's second nature but like I say this is the one thing there is no easy way of doing it that I've ever found and again there's that cut that clears the uh, just in that case just clears uh, the uh, uh, backing cloth and clear that out. Good. Okay. And we're good. And we'll check the back of it. Close that up carefully. Check the back. There you go. See those boards are exactly affixed as they originally were to the text block and it's not symmetrical that's the original binding they didn't put the boards on evenly you can tell by the way the uh, there is no end paper uh, paste down exposed all the way around even though this uh, end is considerably wider well relatively wider than this end 
and yet that's how the original binding was done. You are recreating all of the inconsistencies and irregularities of the original binding. The only way I found to do that consistently uh, and conveniently is to attach the boards to the text block before you do the spine. Now, so we're, we're satisfied with the spine. That's looking actually pretty good. Now, we take our bone folder and carefully just start working the hinge area just a little while everything's still in a damp, flexible state. We do not use heat and pressure on this on the spine. There's no reason to and it dries all too quickly anyhow. There you go. When we're finished fiddling here, we'll take a break, put this in the press. There you go. Uh, trim these off. Uh, you won't see those in the future. Now, when it comes out of the press, you don't. You could do all of this uh, right now if you wanted. I'm not going to because I need a break. <laughs> Uh, however, when we come back, we're going to take it out of the press, uh, simply put polyvinyl uh, white glue on the underside of the outer flap, press that down, that's done. The same to the other side, then we're going to open it up. Actually, we'll do this first and the outer uh, flap uh, at the last. However, uh, the inner we will take our newly guarded end papers and place them thus. Uh, here we use uh, heat and pressure, the iron, and we make a nice clean crisp shoulder, inner shoulder, uh, inner hinge, uh, squared off with the board and uh, press all that down at after that's done, then this goes down, and that's essentially what you're going to see aesthetically when you open the book. Uh, marble paper, red, and marble paper. I would have gone with a brown, but the client, uh, when this was discussed, he opted for the red. That's his call. That's his book. So, at any rate, um, and then, that's it. Then it all goes in the press. And at the very last, after a day or so to just cure, uh, we'll take the finished book out and I'll show you how to attach the spine.